This them. conference will now be recorded. There we go. Yeah, they don't have microphones built into them um, to just to keep the cost down a little bit. But you know, for instance, all of you know these little Logitech cameras now have some kind of uh, you know, dual microphone built in. There's all kinds of different manufacturers out there that support that. So it's um, it's it's available for you. I'm sure they can build a package around that. So let's get let's get into it. So this is the RM 75 inch uh, O2 series. This, this is running Android 8 operating system. Um, what's great about this is that the hardware that's built on this is very, very robust and sturdy. Uh, so for instance, uh, you can bang on this. It has four millimeters of Gorilla Glass. Uh, so it's very hard to break. Um, we've had one of these fall off the wall and the glass didn't break at all. Uh, it was a poor insulation, but it's uh, very sturdy. So you don't have to worry about kids breaking it or scratching it or anything like that. Uh, this does have uh, a flicker-free backlight with low blue light certified. So the practicality of that is teachers that are riding up close on this all day, their eyes don't get tired uh, because we have something called eye care that we kind of stole from our monitor division uh, and our gaming monitors. So, uh, you know, gamers are looking at monitors all day long. So we developed something that you can look at all day long. And it doesn't affect your eyes. Uh, on top of that, we do have an anti-glare screen that, that prevents uh, prevents you from uh, getting lots of glare from sun and different lights in the room. Uh, the other hardware features that we have is we have two 16 watt speakers built into this forward facing. So that means it's not having to bounce around off the back of the wall to get to you. It's like an actual uh, sound bar. And on top of that sound bar, we also have a handy little pin tray that's won all kinds of design awards. You can set the pins there. It doesn't have to be a, uh, um, magnetic little area like some other people and you can set other other things and peripherals on here like the remote it comes with so you know exactly where it's at uh other hardware we do it does come with two stylus and what's great about these uh is that there's no batteries so you don't have to change out any quadruple a batteries anymore no triple a's no, nothing like that so and they're cheap to replace oh, hey. and stir oh, hey. what's up Bill? Hey, hey ryan uh, we can't see your uh other video or we can't see you on video Oh, I had my preview on. Sorry about that. There we go. Okay, great. Now we can see both. All right. So now you can see me. <laughs> We're going to get into it, uh, the inside of the board. We so want you to, We want you to bang on that again just to verify that you, in fact, were doing that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. I there thought you go. maybe that was, on, was an accident on purpose, but okay. Yeah. I'm not, there's no Hollywood magic here. But yeah, so it's it's really super sturdy. Um, so what you get is we're going to set up like the number one admin account, like a general admin, and then all of your teacher accounts are going to come out of that one. So that's what I've done here on my demo account. You can see that uh, it wants you to log in, um, but you can also just use this as a connection and have an HDMI plugged into it or just start a quick easy write session. So all your teachers are going to get their own login. And what's good about this is that we've integrated a QR code login. So I can just tap login, QR code, and then scan it with my phone. And then it's the same as just scanning any type of QR code. And I've saved my information on my phone and I can just tap login. And it takes just a second because our internet's very slow at the office, but it's logging me into my personal account here. So uh, you can see Ryan Hood admins down there. It has my background, it has my pin apps and widgets that I want on my personal account, and I could be different from room to room. Um, and uh, what that mainly brings you is your AMS files. So with this, you can see I have Google Drive, Dropbox, and OneDrive with a little chain link next to it. And uh, basically, in essence, your Google Drive follows you around with one login to the board and to Google Drive, Dropbox, and OneDrive. So you can see how fast it is for me to just actually get into uh, my folders and find all kinds of different documents and open them directly from the board itself. Uh, you can even do network drive. You can also have internal drives and uh, plug USBs into the back if you want to access files that way. Um, and with, with so the BenQ panel, you can go to any classroom in the district and, and your data follows you, your profile follows you. Some of the competitors, you can only have four teachers on a board and you can't go to any classroom in the district. So it's a nice differentiator for us. Yeah, so like uh, 
in Fostoria, Ohio, way out in the middle of nowhere, they have 175 boards that I helped set up. And they actually have, the teachers are moving rooms now instead of the students, which is kind of interesting. Uh, so each teacher just logs into the next board that they go to and it logs them out of the previous one. So you don't have to worry about running across campus to log out so you can log into the next one. So it's a one place login anywhere. Um, so it's super handy. It's something that we only have uh, with our partnership with Amazon Web Service. Uh, so the AMS is amazing. Uh, and that's part of your login. So um, the security that you're going to not have to worry about is something that we're already taking care of for you with that. Um, so let's, uh, I know these are going to be mostly used by teachers. So let's jump into our uh, EasyWrite software. And it's right here. This is just our cloud whiteboarding and I'm going to change it to a black background just so you can see me a little bit better. And make sure that that's on. Okay. So with this, it's very smooth because of the Android 8 uh, operating system and it does have multiple touch. Uh, this is very common industry type thing. Uh, what's not common is our palm eraser. So I can just slap my full fist up against the up against here and you can see it's that quick and easy to erase. I don't have to select something and then hit erase and you know, uh, it's it makes it more like an actual chalkboard and with our stylus um, that has this real fat chubby tip right here we actually uh, got with the um, anti-glare screen people and we made it actually kind of drag so it feels like you're writing on a, a chalkboard and then you can basically just erase from a chalkboard and you can use any type of large surface thing to you know bring up the eraser it doesn't have to be your hand or something specific just any large surface so it's a really cool feature that we have for just writing and erasing. Um, so the uh, we have a couple different options here. So let's say I've done a whole lesson for the day. I have 16 different pages because you can have multiple pages down here in this area. Uh, let's say I've done all kinds of stuff for the day. I need to save it. I need to go to a floppy disk. If anybody uses floppy disk anymore, but I'm gonna go to floppy disk. I can uh, save it as a PDF or a PNG file. And when I hit confirm on that, it brings up all the places that I can save it to. So quite literally, I can save it to my Google Drive, drop it in a folder, um, you know, go to my PC, get the link and send it out to everybody uh, that needs the notes for the day. Um, what you can also do <clears throat> right next to it is share it. So <clears throat> you, of course, email or print. That's kind of old. But what we have is a QR code. So I'm gonna send it as a picture to all the students in the class uh, immediately. So it takes just a second to create this QR code, but as you can see, you can actually scan this with your phone wherever you are. In, in the classroom, students don't have to walk up, you know, and get papers, and, you know, you can keep your social, social distancing and still get the notes for the day directly onto your device and then save it. So it's a great way for teachers not to have to remember later on, six hours later, to email all the students things. What we also have that we were mentioning, I'll go over this real quick, is our record feature. So uh, tap record, you can see up here in the corner, it shows that it is actually recording everything that I'm doing on the board. Uh, so back to your question, we can actually change in the settings. I can hook up a webcam to this uh, with microphones or just hook up a straight mic, change the mic input, and it, it will record that mic while it's recording the screen at the same time. So that's a definite option for you. Uh, so I can actually record a full lesson, even if I exit out of here, go into Firefox, for instance, and, you know, I was, you know, YouTube or whatever, you know, it'll actually record everything that we're doing here. Uh, let me see. Like, uh, let's go to Wikipedia. Mm -hmm, it's gonna do it. So yeah, it's recording everything that I'm doing. Um, and then I can actually uh, do a two finger hold here and you know do some type of annotation on top of a web page for instance so the students can see what i'm doing while it's actually recording my voice and the video so let's say i want to stop the video i can i can do that from my easy wheel right there and it shows me my file path because it can't automatically save to a drive but this is the only time that you'll actually have to move something from the internal to your cloud storage because that's just how video works um, then I hit OK, but let's say I want to keep going with this, uh, you know, this page right here. I could actually take a little screenshot of something. 
So see, I can crop this. And it's just that's but I, that's what I want. Let's dump it into Easy Write real quick. And now I have it as something to uh, reference and teach from while I am uh, while I'm writing over here. So you can talk about the whatever Saint Croix macaw. So pretty nifty. All right. So I'm going to save this one for last, and I'll go over here. We do have uh, also head rec. Uh, handwriting recognition. So if I take that and circle my name, I can hit the magic button. And now I have my name here. And you can make it bigger or smaller, you know, move it around. Uh, we can also do, let's see, a uh, circle, for instance. I can't draw a perfect circle. Well, it's an oval, so even close enough. So I can move that around. Now I have all kinds of different things to do. You can actually do like a graph, you know, like a three-part graph, of, you know, anything you want to actually put on there and it'll recognize. So I just open another page and it prompts me to choose a background. We have several preloaded backgrounds, including uh, graph paper. Uh, we have a list. We even have like, you know, a uh, football field if you want to uh, use that. Um, or you can import your own backgrounds with this plus button here. And so a teacher could have like a map of the US, for instance, they could have periodic table of elements, you know, all kinds of different things where you can write on it and erase it as a background. Uh, so uh, you can customize this. This doesn't have to be just a math, you know, math board doesn't have to be an English board. It can be whatever subject you're, you're, you, you need it to be. So very, very flexible on that part. So real quick through the toolbox. We have a calculator here um, that uh, is very nice. Six times nine squared, and it hangs up there. So you can have the student come over here and do six times nine squared equals. And they do it, they try to figure it out. They say, oh, uh, I don't know, it's you know, 20. They could say, okay, well, let's check that. And once you write the equal sign, it prompts it to solve it for you. So you can see it was way off. Uh, and this does do all the way up to like a cosine tangent thing. Um, I had a professor give me a cosine thing and I wrote it out because I had no idea what I was talking about. And he's like, oh, that's right, okay. So I believe him. So I believe that that works really well. So we have a, a stopwatch, like, uh, you know, you can time somebody. Uh, teachers love to use the, the timer. Say you have 10 minutes to clean up class. Um, it, it, it plays a loud sound once, the, once it hits zero, so they know uh, that's done. You can do sticky notes. You can even do like a team scoreboard. So, yo, know, team B, team C. Uh, you could see uh, they can, you know, keep track of everything that's on the board. Um, but the number one thing that you're going to use probably as teachers is really fun for interactivity because that's the whole point of this is the draw straws. So, with here, I want three people and we have a classroom of, I don't know, 16 people and they all have their numbers it's kind of like this little mini lottery thing so i hit start and it's going brr, 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 coming through coming through who's it gonna be all right number one and we have number 14 and the last contestant is number 10. so one 14 and 10 are walking up to the board i can close this out open up my toolbox one more time and then divide uh the board into three separate areas and then i can pose the question so Nine times four, and I get paste to all. So now they all have their own writing area uh, that you can't write in once you've crossed over. Uh, pretty nifty there. And they've done their math, they've done their, you know, whatever, uh, social studies, whatever have you. Um, and then they want to save their um, info. So we have two options here. We can go option A or option B, the one to save back to the teachers. Um, you can save it to the internal storage, or we can create three unique QR codes. So because of the partnership with Amazon Web Services, this is going up to the cloud and requesting to be made three QR codes for each student's individual work so they can take it with them immediately. So it takes another load off of the teachers not having to remember to send each student their individual work. But let me exit out of here. Yeah, don't save. So that's our toolbox. Um, 
And of course, we can always import like a picture or even a PDF to annotate on top of it. It does become an object, so um, it doesn't go with the actual writing. That would be more of a background. So we do have our list here. We can add different pages. We can actually uh, move these around by pressing and holding like you would on a PowerPoint. Do, 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 put that up there. Um, yeah, I mean, this is basically easy write in a nutshell. Um, the, what I was using earlier was the two finger annotation tool. So this is part of the easy write. So two fingers for two seconds, pulls up the wheel and you can move it around by pressing the center. And then you can write in green and red. So uh, really cool annotation part of it. Uh, and then you can clear all. And uh, this is just something for quick annotation. Uh, you'd have to take a screenshot uh, of what you what you've done with the with the tool if you want to save it for later. Um, but yeah, so that's easy right. Any questions for easy right? <clears throat> did you did you show the cloud whiteboarding? Oh no, I didn't. That's why Bill's here. All right, so let's go back down to this guy. So everybody, get out your phones. I don't need to invite you to my class. All right, so everybody scan this QR code with your iPhone. You use your regular camera. With an Android, you just have a, have to have a small QR code reader app. And let me know once a few of you have done it. Do, do, do. Uh, you can use your phone, but if students are using like Chromebooks or something, they don't have a mobile device, you can always go to easywrite.bankq.com, enter the room ID I just made, and you can use it from your browser. It's all browser web-based. Was everybody able to connect that wanted to? Or does anybody need help connecting? I got it to work. Okay, cool. Great. I'm connected. All right. So as you can see, change the color here. Terrible handwriting. So you can see it goes over the air immediately to uh, whatever devices are connected because of the cloud aspect of it. Um, also, at the very bottom of your screen, you can see similar tools to this, but they're opaque. That's because over here next to my invite, um, I have broadcast mode enabled. So if a teacher asks some, somebody to answer a question on the board or, or to send a picture of something, they can actually hit co-creation. Now you can see your tools are lit up and you can actually write back to my board from wherever you are. Uh, you can also send pictures and everything. See people writing right now. <laughs> Pretty cool. But yeah, so you can send pictures. Um, I can erase things. I can move move things around for you. I can open the toolbox. Um, it's It really is a very nice collaboration mode, especially with the setup that I have now, because quite literally, I'm the teacher and y'all are the students. There's Bill's, not Bill's dogs. Whose dogs are those? Those are my uh, sister's dogs. Sister's dogs, that's right. Every, everybody likes puppies. I can tell Lindsay likes puppies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The black one's going to be big. Wow. Yep. Um, yeah. So this is a really cool thing to have. So let's, you know, we can do multiple pages also. Um, you know, go back a page, change the background, do a four square, you know, write with your own team there. Um, so with cloud collaboration, with the basic toolboxes, with recording, um, we like to think of easy write is that you basically can give a teacher an easy write, um, open up easy write, hand them a stylus and say, you know, figure this out because we try to keep it very simple. And we want people to be able to walk up to the board and figure it out in about 30 minutes by themselves. And, you know, once you, do kind of cross training and you know share secrets uh teachers i've seen really utilize the board in ways i don't know about and i walk into a room i'm like oh my goodness how did you do that um and it's it's a really cool very simple way for teachers to teach any questions all right so if i go back over to this guy and hit stop activities you get a message saying that this online 
interaction has ended and you need to save it. In the top uh, left-hand corner of your screen, there's another floppy disk that you can save all of the pages to your phone as a picture. So yet again, the teacher doesn't have to email the lesson out again to all these students. Um, and let me show you one, one last thing here. I didn't show them paintbrush mode, Bill. Or dual <clears> pen. <throat> Let's see here. So if I go to paintbrush mode, I can actually go over here and start painting with this paintbrush. There's nothing special about this little tiny paintbrush dollar Walmart thing. Um, so I can go up in the corner, start painting the sun, um, give it some, it's a summer day in Texas, so super hot. And start painting the sky over here with my hand. Uh, big old areas. So uh, it's pretty nifty. At trade shows, basically all I do is I pull up, if it's getting slow, I pull up like a, from my, from my uh, drive here, I pull up like a coloring book background and just paint funny hats on all the animals and gets people's attention. Uh, so it's, it's pretty, pretty neat on how it works because I'm, you know, painting with my finger and go from like a big area down to a little area because of our much more advanced screen that we have for like, you know, all the nerdy IR densities and how, how close the touch uh, sensors are together. Um, we're one of the, I think we're the only one that can actually support like a paintbrush mode. So it's a lot of fun to goof around with this. Can you just clarify for the record, you can, Anything that's playing on the, the board, as in YouTube, that sound will be recorded, but any external sounds like from the teacher will not be recorded unless they install an external microphone. Yes, exactly. These don't come with microphones built into them. No, so, so that's were, what we were talking about. So if they were playing something on the board though that had sound, that would be included in the recording. Well, no, you would still need a microphone. It doesn't, the only reference of sound is going to be whatever microphone is plugged in. Got it. So, okay. yeah, yeah. And that's what teachers do a lot is they just have YouTube blasting and it still picks it up. Most microphones are what's called, you know, like array mics or omnidirectional. So it picks up like everything. Um, so, yeah, but I'm sure they'll have, they have some uh, different models available for you for that. Right. We, we have two models, the IRM, which, is the lower priced version and we've got the RP, which is the premium that has built in array mics on it where you would need a separate microphone and it has a antimicrobial screen, but that's, you know, a few hundred dollars more. Just so you kind of know. Yeah. Um, hey Ryan, could you go into connectivity for me some more? Uh, so let's say I walk into a classroom. Um, I'm not part of the school district. I've got a laptop and a smartphone on me. Um, are there any ways for the teachers to lock the screen or if they want it left open for say extracurricular activities, can people just walk into the classroom with a laptop and a phone and start using it? Yes, you can. Um, how, does so that, how does that work? Let me log out here. So under the connection, as you were talking about, um, we have you know, the Android, you can actually change it right away to HDMI. There's HDMI's on this uh, right-hand side, or even down to VGA, surprisingly. But we have, um, other part I was gonna go through is InstaShare. So with this, uh, as long as you're on the same uh, same SSID, uh, which you can bridge Wi-Fi and you know hardwire, of course, uh, you can actually uh, cast your device to the board um nice. so it is wireless casting uh our office is super locked down for this um so for instance instashare is what i'm using to show you guys my screen right now believe it or not so you can cast or mirror back to your devices so that's what i'm doing i'm mirroring back to my pc i'm making my screen large, you know, enlarging my screen and then I'm sending it over GoToMeeting and I've tried this over Zoom, Teams, WebEx, it all works the same um, for just sending it out. So if you wanna to cast to the board, they just have to be on the same network and then find uh, this ID. Um, you can also rename this as many times as you want with the settings. Uh, and for security of this, we do have connect code. 
So if I enable the connect code, I have to put that code in at the bottom of my InstaShare app, which is a very small app I can send you. Um, and then there's a connect code window. So if you wanna have it open and anybody that walks into a room to connect to only this one, then that's what you can uh, provide for them. Um, what a lot of teachers like to do is do this one. It's called confirm before mirroring. Uh, and what that means is that if I try to mirror to the screen, a little dialogue comes up here and says, hey, Ryan's trying to mirror to the screen, uh, allow or deny. It has like a 10 second countdown. Um, so you have to be like right here. So the teacher knows who's actually, you know, trying to, you know, cast to the screen, for instance, or they can just block out the connect code. And of course, they can write their name right here. So they know exactly which classroom they're in. And for this, we also have an ability on this RM series to have multiple screens cast. So I could do one large screen, two side by side, four square, or even nine at all, all at the same time, which is a lot. Um, I've tested this. So uh, on PC and Mac, there's touch feedback. So uh, I don't know if you guys are have like teachers that use their own proprietary software that's only on their PC or Mac, but they can actually take their PC, throw it up on the board full screen, and then it becomes a giant PC with touch feedback. So they can do everything from on the board back to their PC that's way in the back of the room. Um, oh, nice. And yeah, and I've done side by side and I've done Foursquare where it's all, they still all have touch feedback. Uh, and with that, it does support, since this is a 4K uh, resolution board, if you split it into four, they all become 1080p. So you could still see everybody's, you know, presentation from far in the back, you know, way in the back of the room. Um, this does kind of, uh, you know, put a, a tiny bit of weight on your network. So I would anticipate, you know, uh, uh, jumping that up a little bit, at least like 50% more than what you're anticipating. Um, and, but, and just as a reminder to Lakeville, the project we're talking about here does include a direct connection of HDMI and USB to the teacher's computer in each classroom. So just just a heads up. Yeah. Okay. So that's uh, that's InstaShare, really. Um, it does also support Chromebooks, by the way. Um, so you can actually cast Chromebook. Uh, it, it does, Chrome is not a full you know system, so you can't do touch feedback on it. Um, but it's uh, it does support at least casting if you need to cast something. Let me start it again. I've got a couple more things to show you. There we go. Since this is Android, like I was saying, it's open platform Android. There's no store to go shop for things, really, unless you get like, if you want to get real nerdy and, and do one of these uh, uh, outside stores like Aptoid or APK Mirror, Mirror if you know what I'm saying? If not, we'll, we'll skip over that. Uh, but as you can see, I actually have Zoom installed on this board. I have um, also this cool little um, teaching tool. Uh, it's pretty old, but it's fun to use in, in classrooms because it's like a heart analyzer and it's interactive. So I can actually go into here. Oops, and spin everything around and look at stuff. It also plays super loud. Whoa, it's too loud in here. I don't know if you can hear that very well, but yeah. So if you have an app like quizzes, you know, uh, those type of teaching tools, you can actually put them on the board wirelessly uh, via our DMS app, which I'll go over next. Um, so if a teacher says, hey, can I get quizzes or I want Zoom on my board, can you send that to me? You say, okay, all you have to do is get on your on your laptop wherever you are because it's cloud-based and then log in and you can wirelessly send it to the board in the background and it installs. It doesn't interrupt what the teacher's doing. Uh, the only thing that would interrupt the, what the teacher's doing is doing a firmware update, uh, which also on DMS you can do remotely, which is a huge bonus for, you know, if a place has a whole bunch, hundreds of boards everywhere. So uh, DMS is awesome. And I think we'll have time to go over that, uh, hopefully. What time is it? Yeah, I might have a little bit of time to go over that. Um, but yeah, I think, let me see. Oh, we also have uh, the x -Sign broadcast. Uh, let's see if I can send a little broadcast over here real quick. DMS app come with this whole program? It's not something extra? Yeah, it actually, uh, actually does. Um, 
Yep, the AMS, the Exxon, the broadcast, Exxon broadcast, and the DMS are all free with no uh, no fees. That's excellent. Same with the uh, EasyWrite whiteboarding mm -hmm. software. Oh boy, it's crazy. All right, so let's just go over the DMS real quick. This is uh, so I have several different boards on here. I'm not even sure what some of these are. So I got the RM right here. And so we have the option also of turning Ethernet on and off and Wi-Fi on and off. Just so you know, you network guys there. Let's see if I can do the broadcast while that's updating. All right, so Exxon Broadcast. Um, uh, let's see here. So this is the one in the office. Yeah, so if I, let's say, for instance, you have an emergency of whatever kind. Uh, you need to alert everybody. Um, you can use this instead of like a PA system to create an interrupt. What that means is that it's going to overlay whatever the teacher is doing, like interrupt their interrupt their lesson. But you can also use it for happy things like uh, happy birthday, Mr. Jones. And you can send it to the whole class or the whole school or you can send it to just science or just, you know, wherever. Um, and I hope this works. I'm on my hotspot now. Not... Yeah, two bar, one bar now. Is this program meant to just send messages or can you send like daily announcements? You're exactly right. So let me show you, I'm still sharing my screen. So um, I can do create interrupt uh and i can do actually send an image here so and i can send more than one image so if you have like a meet the teacher night or something or you have like a public you know one in the library um and you know it's not going to be used for a while or you have one at the entrance or anywhere you can actually send scrolling messages so we can do the announcements for the week you can do the lunch menu you know school happenings um you know play every 10 seconds and then you can do an important message uh because uh, i'll show you that in a second but you can do like, you know, play for four hours and then it turns back into the normal board. Uh, you can also do something really cool and send a video. So you can have somebody, the teacher, student council record weekly announcements and schedule that for, let's you know, Monday at 9 a.m. It'll automatically play to all the boards. Um, and then once the announcement's over, it goes back into whatever, wherever it was. Um, and then you can even to a YouTube link. So you can copy paste a YouTube directly into it. So this is a really cool option. And also principals love this because you can say, hey, you, you, we could record to you. Um, you know, uh, they like to be in front of people. So it's a uh, uh, pretty great option, especially because when it plays, nobody actually has to be there because of the schedule system here. So basically you just uh, load up, you know, you click on whatever time it's gonna be and it brings up everything and then you can change the dur duration and do different all kinds of different things with this um you know video image and text uh, are all available to you on this and just so you know this does not cost you anything to use it so if you use it once we're not going to slap you with a licensing fee we're not going to you know give you we're not going to come back and try to invoice you later um, we fought for this to be free for the US and Canada, which we are happy to say we won that fight. So use it as much as you want, experiment, go crazy. Um, uh, that being said, also our DMS, the device management, typically you have to have a lot of things going on, uh, you know, for device management back in. I think my hotspot's super slow here, I'm not sure why. But basically, um, it, you can go into your individual boards and then see all the information like you can rename it from here so you know mr jones's class is right here it shows you all the status uh, and then you can go to the controls normally these aren't, these aren't grayed out but you can quite literally change the input remotely you can change the volume remotely um, and then the cool thing is this install update you can see this particular board has these uh these on there right now um, like my board at home has way more apps. You have 25 gigs of of um, of memory, 
Uh, and then let's say you want to add something to that board, you just click this little uh, this little uh, plus button, and then you could put ABC Preschool, for instance, and hit install. And then it installs over the air. So to that particular board. So um, so you let's say everybody wants Chrome, for instance, which everybody probably will. Uh, the boards come with Firefox, but some people just like Chrome. So I could go to this Chrome version here and hit install. And then if I could just click everybody, you can see everybody's pulled up here and I hit install and then it blasts it out to everyone all at once. So it saves you from having to run around with the USB drive for uh, installing just apps basically for people. So it's uh, it's something that's really great uh, that comes with the board and um, it's free. So everything that we're talking about today does not have any licensing fees. So don't worry about any of that uh, coming back to bite you. Um, and you can, one can, other, you do that with, can you do that with deleting as well? Let's say you're an IT professional, you're checking what apps are on the boards, you want to delete some apps off specific boards, you can do that as well, correct? Yeah, so like, um, let me get rid of this display note because I actually don't need it anymore. You, all you do is right click on it, hit uninstall application, install now. So it just takes a second to uninstall as you can see over here. And uh, once that's done, it'll be done. I think my board's actually off at home because I'm not there. But yeah, so that's how you delete it. But once it turns on, like even if it's even if it's off completely and you go to this other page and you blast out Chrome to everybody, once it turns on in the background, it loads it up because it's being sent down from this repository. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's super nifty. So that's why, I mean, we won like a huge bid in California for a public works uh, because their offices are like literally 200 miles away from each other in every direction and they don't, they didn't, they didn't want to be driving everywhere. So they bought all of our boards just because of DMS. <clears throat> but yeah, so I'm show you one more little cool thing, actually two more. Uh, so you can go to equipment management here under our AMS and let's say, I click in this one, you can actually change the default wallpaper before login. So you can put your Lakewood Schools, uh, you know, banner behind uh, behind the login page. And it'll just have the, the three login icons, the time, and then your school logo, which tons of schools love that. Uh, and then after, uh, after login, you can see, I can go to my personal settings here, and this is what the teachers will get, is they can change their background to whatever it is. So. It'll be school login, generic, and then the teacher scans the QR code and then their background comes up. So it's just a cool way to brand your school with you know, the technology so it looks like it's school's technology. So pretty darn awesome. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it. Oh, and we have a little, little icing on the cake. We have a very basic remote here. Um, it doesn't have a tin key, doesn't have colored buttons and all kinds of junk on there. There's only three keys that you need to learn. Uh, so blank, now imagine that. Blanks the backlight off. We can also hit freeze and it puts a little, uh, it puts a little, uh, you know, lock spyglass up there in the top. And this is great for using InstaShare for instance. So let's say teachers have like a list of things for the students to do. They can InstaShare it up there if they like or pull it from their Google Drive, whatever they want. But if they're InstaSharing, they can throw it up there hit freeze, unshare it, and then continue working on their laptop in the back of the room. So it's something cool to, to play with. We also have this little one on the top, which is called Spotlight. So it's built into the, the, the remote here, and you can actually change the size of it. Okay, go down real small and you know point things out. If you're on easy write, it works, it works on any uh, application. And if I hit left and right, I don't know how well you can see this, but actually turns it into a red dot. So you have a laser pointer uh, built into this uh, air mouse remote. And that just comes with the remote, no extra charge for that. And I think I've exhausted most everything. <laughs> you guys have questions. I think one of the big <laughs> questions is uh, support and training uh, beyond installation. Um, how does that look like from, BenQ standpoint. 
Awesome. Well, yeah, oftentimes what we can do um, is, you know, get your account management set up, help you guys get that set up, the uh, IAMS for the teachers. If you guys have uh, Active Directory, um, you can do it that, you know, do it that way. Ryan can help you with that. Uh, if you have put them all in a CSV file, that's easy to, to upload via C, uh, CSV. We can help with that. Otherwise, it's more of a manual process. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've, we've got this recorded. I've got a YouTube page with how-to videos. Um, you know, like I said, I'll be out in Michigan on the 18th, maybe the 19th. Um, you guys probably won't have a panel by then, but, uh, you know, mm -hmm. if, if I'm out there, I can come on site and do an hour training. Uh, uh, usually when I do that, the schools might invite some other districts in the area to come see as well. Uh, so it's worth, you know, worth everybody's time. Um, and that's, that's kind of what we offer. So the, the, uh, you've got the video here. We've got our videos on my YouTube page. Ryan can help you live in a situation like this using GoToMeeting to get the IAMS set up, which will be key for all the teachers. Um, and then, yes, uh, and then uh, AM, and then AMCOM is going to be on-site training at the beginning, at the start of the of the project, and we will come out to fix anything uh, for the first year, um, any problems, any problems setting it up. We can be on-site in person. Um, from the second to fifth year that the that it's under warranty, uh, will still be available for troubleshooting, but it'll be more of a virtual uh, troubleshooting at that point. Uh, yeah, I think we talked about the warranty on the interview, but it's a five-year warranty, I believe, is what we offered. That is, that is correct. And that includes shipping both ways if, if there is a failure. Um, and we have the uh, white glove services included as well. So if we can send you the panel, send a third-party company out to take the old panel off the wall, box it up, it gets shipped out, and then, you know, they put the new one up. Um, and then if, if there's just some issues you have, uh, depending on what it is, we have a technical support engineers, which would be phone support. If it's a higher level one, we move it up to Ryan or Felix, who's our, who are field engineers, or possibly even Tom, uh, who's our product manager. Lindsay, I, I brought you in. I know it's uh, not a district you're tied into deeply, but... Um, Picture your brain and someone who has seen these uh, interactive plant panels a little more. Do you have any uh, questions or, or items that you like to specifically kind of see? Well, I've been kind of sprinkling my questions in throughout the whole thing. Sorry, I kept butting in. But um, I don't know if I kind of caught in a little bit late. Did Was it ever said how many USB you know available ports are on the display? Uh, this one has three, and then it has the proprietary slot for a separate Wi-Fi dongle, so you can free up one of those. And is the Android module something that can be upgraded? As in, uh, it has a slot, and it you can, you know, later on a chip is included or something, and you can put in a new OPS. Yeah, it's not like an actual slot. It has to be built into the hardware. So this chipset is built for Android 8. Um, it's it's kind of, it, we the software is Android 8, but we give regular firmware updates over the air um, that, you know, squash little bugs, they add features. There's, you know, quite a few different things that have come along the way. Um, and that being said, I have a weekly call with headquarters about this thing called a wish list. So we collect we collect a wish list from all over the place, and we actually send it back to them. And for instance, like one thing that I created was this guy down here. I can't see it very well with this little box. Um, so you can actually customize the login screen if you wanted to. Like you could put like a calendar up there, and it just always shows the calendar. Um, and before you can change anything so I can put the weather up here before it was just static so that's one thing I, I did so there's a wish list that's out there that we can add things to 
but so you can't you can't upgrade the operating system that's built into the panel. But I think what Lindsay was kind of saying is you could there's a slot PC opening where you could put a you know Windows on the slot PC. You could put could you put Chrome or Android you know ten on a slot PC in three years or something or five years down the road. Yeah, you can do it. Like there's Chrome boxes you can use. Um, but the main thing that that we like to stress is that InstaShare lets you send whatever you want to the board uh, via your PC, Mac, Chromebook. You know, you can even cast your tablet, your phone, whatever you want to it. So uh, we don't think that you need to upgrade. And I mean, you can't upgrade. So that's kind of why we made InstaShare to be able to send anything to the board. Like, for instance, if you have a teacher that loves Smart Notebook or Promethean, whatever, what have you, they can cast that from their PC, have touch feedback, and now the BenQ board is a smart board. <laughs> it's pretty wild. But yeah, so it's super flexible. Okay. Well, I saw the BenQ boards a, a few years back, and you guys have made some really amazing improvements. So they look great. Yeah, they do look great. Yeah. Yep, thank you. Oh, yeah. And they're, they're UHD 4K, and then they've got HDMI out, which you could, you could go to a projector. I think I talked about that in the interview too, to keep your projectors there or daisy chain two panels together. And, and it takes I got a, a quick question. Um, are there any recurrent costs? I know I, I heard, you know, some mention of some things that were included and then there was the firmware updates. You know, is there any life cycle cost over the, you know, next five years that the district should budget for? No. Um, so everything that's included on here, firmware updates, Xsign, DMS, AMS logins, whatever, you, what have you, there's no extra uh, cost for that. Um, you do still get support for the life of the board, even if the warranties run out. Um, so like there's, we still work on firmware for some of the older boards because um, they're very obsessed about that. So you still get to contact me and the, the call team if you have any issues. So it's not, it's ba it honestly is the price of the board is what you're paying for the life of the board. And on the fir firmware updates, how often should the district anticipating, how, how often should they anticipate updates? Uh, we try to do it every four to five months uh, just to compile things. Um, but usually the firmware that's current, if there's something that's absolutely, you know, something really weird happens, then they'll push another one out pretty quick. But I've only seen that once since I've been here, and I was on the older board actually. So every, I'd anticipate every four to five months to do that. Right. Yeah. Earlier in the product cycle, you, the updates are more often, and then later in the product cycle, once everything's smooth, they're, they're less often. But for example, right now it comes with Easy Write Five that you saw. Uh, we've got Easy Write Six coming, and you'll have a free upgrade to Easy Write Six. So we, won't, we won't charge for the upgrade to that. And that will work on this panel. Um, I've seen various installations of boards mounted to walls. Uh, and I heard one fell off a wall, but it makes me just inquire your typical mounting practices. Uh, I've seen people take plywood and cut it to about the same size as the display board, mount that to whatever surface, whether it's drywall or a block wall, and then mount the, the board to that. Um, just kind of curious your mounting bracket uh, practices. Or is that by contractor by contractor basis? Yeah, that's probably a question for Matthew. Yeah, so um, I will mount the boards as needed for the for the classrooms, I have anticipated needing an over the board mount. So as we're demoing out the old smart board, if we need to mount over top of an existing whiteboard or chalkboard and not disturb that surface, I have that type of mounting um, put in for my bid. If there is a different mount, if I can, I'm going to use a, a real, you know, and we're not going to use plywood. We're going to uh, mount directly to concrete walls in most cases. Um, but we have we have the capability in this project to to mount on over the board mounts or regular straight flat mounts, whatever the classroom uh, needs specifically. 
Uh, do you guys have any other, any other questions uh, from Lakeville or from Barton Mella? Um, just kind of going off the one question that was already asked. Um, first of all, thanks. I liked everything that I saw. What I'm curious about is, you know, just the, like, I understand there's going to be firmware updates and, you know, we'll get updates indefinitely, but realistically, we all know eventually the device starts slowing down, you know, and in my Android phone, I'm lucky to get, you know, three years out of it before I really want something else. Realistically, what are we looking at for that piece of it before we'd want to probably be relying more on a PC? Uh, well, that's that's a good question. Um, so let's there's a real world scenario for that. So I don't know if you heard about Apple. They said that they started slowing down people's phones that were older on purpose right. to save batter to save battery life. Mm -hmm. um, and Android kind of does the same thing, but. So we're not looking at a battery powered device, so that's not going to come into play at all. all. Right. So years, I mean, five years of this same, you know, that hardware running at that processor, that's realistic then? Yeah, we have some other boards here in the office from like four years ago that still run perfectly fine. Um, okay. The, this one ha does have the newer processor, so it's super fast with Android 8 displaying the 4k so uh this these are all rated at thirty thousand hours so that's quite a long time <laughs> mm -hmm. all right. okay. yeah and because there's the instacast and uh people's in the school districts personal devices and computers are constantly upgrading i do think this will last the district uh five years plus um uh, maybe definitely longer and still be able to work with all the existing new computers and new devices coming in to the district. Yeah, okay. definitely. That's why, yeah, just to piggyback on that, that's why we do all the updates, the firmware things, because like, for instance, we didn't have Chrome casting availability uh, a year and a half ago, and we found out that there's so many stinking Chromebooks out there that we needed it, so we just added it. So it's, it's a good bonus that we got. <clears throat> Can you say it? Um, power save modes and and whatnot so they turn off after so you know a period in the day just to increase yeah. longevity yes you can so you can actually set a on off schedule on the board itself uh then you can put it into a power save mode while it's even on um, oh, and it uh it'll just do it it'll just have the 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 regular on off for as long as you want. That's what I did over at Fostoria at 175 stinking boards because you wanted to blast the distance. So, and we are working on in Q1 next year to be able to set those in our DMS software. So you can actually see what each each board is set to. Uh, right now it's just available on the back end of the Android, um, but it's coming soon. Uh, that being said, a little side note, there's no settings until you log in. So students can't come up and change it to Chinese and you can't change it back. By the way, side note. <laughs> <laughs>